your van here, this is your battery box. That opens up there, you've got your 12 volt battery there. Um, don't really need to do too much with that unless you need to change the battery for any reason. Um, but just on the side here, this is your 240 mains power. So you've got your main lead there, it's just a wee cap that folds back to remove it. And <clears throat> you've got this little indentation here which corresponds with the, the wee lug on the, the van side, so it can only go on the one way. Um, but that just slides back up there. And then the wee cap sort of helps lock it on. Um, you do have a wee groove um, in your battery box there, so you can can shut the box, lock it up, and just keeps the weather out and you know stops anyone getting in there at your battery or you know trying to steal anything. Um, yeah, so that's your 12 volt and your mains power adapter. <coughs> just behind your battery box, you've got your uh, water inlet housing and your Truma uh, heater system outlet. So first up, you've got your water inlet housing there. So that lifts up. You then get your pump hose. It just pushes in in there like that, just clicks in, there's a little sort of trigger lever down here so when it comes time to remove it you just hold that lever back and then you can remove it like that. Um, once it's plugged in you go to your barrel, make sure that's full of water, take your cap off, you then drop this pump end into as close to the bottom of the tank as you can get it um, and then you have this little sort of dust and leaf guard that goes over where the cap normally sits. Um, so once that's all in, you know, water, uh, sorry, your barrel's full of water, your pump's in, you can then go inside and turn your pump on and you should have water ready to go. Your water pump housing, this is your heater outlet, or sorry, your Truma water heater outlet. So this is generally when you're running the system on gas, uh, this is your exhaust vent. <coughs> um, <coughs> this travel cover is very like quite important make sure that when you're traveling or storing the van and you're not using um, using your water heater on gas make sure this covers on um, you can get you know quite a bit of dust and insects you know spiders and things like that in there and that does really affect uh, the running of it um, you'll, you'll find if you do get spiders and things like that in there um, it won't start um, so you've got to make sure it's it's nice and clear um, so yeah, when it's not in use, make sure the cover just clicks back on there and then just click shut like that. Down behind your wheel on the same side as your battery box and things, uh, this is your grey water outlet for your self-containment system. Uh, so <coughs> you've then got your caddy here, there's a full and empty gauge just so you know when it's time to empty it. Um, you've got a shut off valve here so that's in the closed position and then it turns around to the open position. Um, you've also down this end, this is your breather outlet, so there is a little shut off here as well. So when you're transporting it, you can turn it there to the closed position and there to the open position. Um, there's this little pipe which pops in here, so helps with the air ventilation, so when this is filling up full of uh, your waste water, it just allows the air to escape. Um, Back to the main one there, you'll have a cam lock cap there, so that comes off. There's also the wee one, one on here as well, so you make sure they come off. Um, <coughs> you then get your hose, so pushes on there, and these wee levers come around to lock it on. They can be a wee bit stiff when they're new, but they do get do get a bit easier. Um, then, so that one's on your van, this one goes to your, to your waste caddy, and pulls around like that. That's it locked on. So make sure that's in the open position and the one on the back with your air outlets open. Um, and then that should be your wastewater system set up ready to go. Um, under this wee lid here, that up. you've got some bungee cords there so you can, you can strap this caddy to under the chassis there or around the, around the rim of the wheel. Just stops this from rolling away in the wind or anything like that. Um, and you also in there have a cap with a hole in it with the spout so that can go down on the end in place of the air outlet and just gives you a nice direct pull when you're empty. <coughs> Another thing to note just on your outlet here, um, there is a little shut off valve underneath. Uh, so if you've still got water in the line from the sink and vanity and stuff like that, 
um, you can shut that off so you can go and empty your, your waste caddy and then you can open it up once everything is reconnected. So down behind your um, grey water uh, waste caddy system, this is your inlet for your uh, toilet. So that opens up there, you've got your filler in here. They generally take about 8 to 10 litres, just depending on the model. Um, you've also got a pink liquid which goes in here as well. Um, that's designed to help keep the pump lubricated and just to you know, keep things smelling nice when you use the flushing system. Um, it's pretty much just a, visu a visual uh, level, so as you fill it up you'll notice the water will just sit into here. Um, so yeah, once that's all, all filled up you can close that up and you're ready to go. Just below that is your waste caddy system for the toilet. So pop that open like that. Um, this is your, your caddy here. There's a little lever at the bottom, so when it comes time to remove it, hold that up, pull your caddy out, and this is the top of it. So this part and these bits there, they're operated from inside, um, you know, from the, the inside of the van. Um, this little button here is like an air and a sort of release system. Um, so if you ever go to to empty your caddy and, and the cap is really tight or you can't get the cap off, just press that button. It just allows a bit of air into the system and just takes the suction off so you can then undo your cap a lot easier. Um, there's a blue liquid which can go in this caddy um, that helps break down the waste and also helps with um, smells and things as well. Um, but yeah, cap on, fold that back round once it's empty and then you can just lift that up. Slide that in and just make sure it clicks onto that wee tab. Um, the only other thing to, to really know in here is you've got this little uh, sort of plug. Um, so it's a drain plug for your fresh water system at the top. Um, when you're storing the van um, for a long time, especially over the winter months, uh, it's a good idea to drain this top tank out. Um, it stops the pump being submerged in water for long periods of time and it also just helps for frost protection and yeah, make sure nothing gets burst or broken. On the front corner on the other side of the van you've got this little unit here. This is designed so you can hook up a barbecue um, off the bottles that are in your van on the wet locker. Um, so you get a, there's a little adapter which plugs into here and you've got your shut off valve. Um, the only thing to know about this is if you are going to run a barbecue off it um, you can't have a regulator on the line on the barbecue because um, it's already regulated from the van so if yeah if you do happen to have a regulator on that line on the barbecue line um, it won't operate because it tries to double regulate the system up at the front of your van this is your uh, your wet locker so it lifts up like that you've got enough storage there for two gas bottles the two nine kilo gas bottles you've got your connection there so you know like a barbecue one just a screw on fitting You've got your mains power cable there, uh, and so you've got a, a stabiliser leg winder as well, so that's for the four corner stabilisers, uh, and there is a little, uh, you can reach it a little wheel brace there as well, so if you ever need to remove the wheels. Um, it's important to know that this is classed as a wet locker, so they designed that you can sort of hose them out if they get dirty and things like that. There's little vents in the corners, um, so you can yeah you can store muddy boots and things like that in there, but um, yeah, not not ideal for storing anything you don't want getting a bit dusty or you know any moisture or dampness on it. So uh, yeah, just just a good thing to know. Just in front of your wet locker, this is your A-frame and your hitch lock system. Uh, so you've got your jockey wheel there, so you know, wind it up and down to adjust your height for the tow ball. Um, <clears throat> there is a couple of, little, couple of little grooves in this top part of it. So when you go to wind it right up to get it out of the way, these parts of the, the legs just wind up into there. Um, just helps bring it right up. Once it's on the vehicle, you can then undo this lever, so you unwind it like that. And then you pull the jockey wheel right up, and this wheel will lift up inside the frame here. Um, just gets it right up out of the way while you're travelling and just make sure you tighten that back up. Um, beside that is your handbrake lever, so it's just a push down and a push up. So we'll pull up, so um, 
there is, it might be a wee bit hard to see, but down in here there is a little bubble level. Um, so you can sort of use your jockey wheel to help level things up when you're setting the van up. Um, up the front part, you've got your standard 7 pin plug for your trailer lights. Um, you also have your breakaway cable. So that's designed that when the, the tow ball's in here and it's on your vehicle, you can loop this cable around and it hooks back onto itself like that and it'll just sit up in, the, in here in front of the tow ball. So in the unlikely event that this ever came off, uh, off the vehicle, this cable gets pulled and it actually it's designed to break off but before it does that it activates the handbrake just stops the van you know running away down the motorway or anything like that past you um, if the suit is was to ever come off um, so you can hook it there you can if you like um, you can hook that part onto the d shackle point on your vehicle as well either way works just as well um, it's just a personal preference thing so either yeah around there back onto itself or onto the vehicle uh, this is your main locking part so when you, you back your vehicle up, you're going to lower it, lower this down onto the tow ball. This is your main wee lock lever. So when the tow ball actually gets into the right position, this will, will drop down like that to let you know that it's locked on. You then have your secondary lock. So that comes down over top. You'll know that it's on properly because this little button in the center here will just pop up and you'll get a little green ring around the edge just to let you know that it's on there properly. Um, and that's, that's basically you you hooked up ready to go um, so yeah that's all on put your breakaway cable around there and make sure your jockey wheels up and you're good to go um, taking it off you lift this lever up you then have to hold this black lever up in position like that while you wind the jockey wheel up so to lift it off the vehicle um, if you don't hold it up it'll just try and bring the vehicle up with the van um, so you just got to hold it up until it's come off the tow ball so oh, sorry just inside your front door or your main entrance door there um, this is sort of your main 12 volt control unit so you've got your master switch there so that turns the 12 volt system on um, you do have a little button here so you can hold that down and just check your current voltage of your battery um, beside that you've got your awning light which comes on just on the outside here you've got your main light switch for inside the van so you can keep your master on, but you can turn that one off, which just turns all your 12 volt lights off. Um, so if you're heading away for the day, or you know you you want to keep your 12 volt on, but not your lights, you can just flip that one off. Um, this one here beside it is your water pump. So as I showed earlier in the video, um, make sure you get your water barrel full of water. You've got your water pump uh, hose all plugged in and ready to go. Once that's on, you can then come in turn your pump on and that should uh, prime your system ready to go you just you might have to run the run the taps for a little bit just to get the air out of the line um, but once that's all uh, you know got all the air out and it's uh, full of water you can just shut your taps off and that system will pressurize and just come on when it's needed uh, and then yeah that's just off there for that one this is your main 240 volt control for your room heater um, so you've got this little outer ring here so it turns up to 2000 watts or 2 kilowatts um, you do have a thousand and five hundred so you just select between which one of those you want um, and then you do have like a little thermostat control in the center here so that just winds around to where you want um, you'll know that the system's on you get this wee green light going um, and then yeah to turn it off just back to the wee zero there but that is your main control for your room heater on 240. This is the actual heater unit itself. Um, this side here, this is purely just your fan control. So this will work whether you're running on 240 mains power or gas. Um, so in the center there is off, round to the left is continuous. So the fan will just run the whole time and then you just have your, your fan speed there from one to five. Um, otherwise you can go round to the right here, which is like an automatic setting. So the fan will kick in and out when it's needed, just the, it's controlled by little temperature sensors inside the heater. Um, so yeah, if you, you've got that set at two, that'll just click in and out when it needs to. Um, and this fan does circulate out the front here, but it also circulates to little other vents around the vent.
on this side of the heater this is your gas uh, operation side for the heater so to turn that on turn that round I normally put it up quite high when I first start it um, you then hold this button down which sort of purges your gas system um, you then use your igniter there so that'll that'll spark the system into life um, there's a little inspection hole down here um, down the bottom a bit further and in a bit is a little sight glass um, so once this is down you're holding this down you've ignited the system you should get a nice wee blue flame going down there um, once that's going for a few seconds let go of that button and it should click into a nice sort of bright yellowy orange flame um, and then once that's all good you can then just set your your temperature setting from there um, when you're finished with running it on gas just turn it right back round to the zero and that'll turn the gas system off so down just under your seating here in front of it um, this is your hot water control so this is your 240 uh, mains power side so to get hot water on mains power just flip that down then you just have to wait um, you know a good sort of I'd say maybe 15 minutes to half an hour before you start getting the water getting you know starting to get nice and warm um, so that's for your 240 side so just on and off for that um, directly beside it is to run your uh, hot water off gas um, so as I mentioned before with that um, dust cover outlet make sure you've taken that off um, and then come in turn the wee rotary dial around there you'll hear a wee bit of a click in the front of the van which is it trying to engage and ignite um, you then have your thermostat control in the middle so you just turn that up and down um, you'll also notice there's a little red light will pop up um, that's just currently telling me that there's there's no gas connected so either your bottle's turned off or you've run out of gas so if you do get that red light um, turn it back off go out check that you've got gas or the bottle's turned on and then you can come in turn that back on and it should go so down under your seat here this is your uh, water heater unit so you don't really have to worry about that too much it does its own thing it's operated off all those controls um, the only thing to know is just down here you've got this little yellow lever um, so when you're storing the van um, especially over the winter months much like your fresh water tank on your toilet um, come in flip this wee lever up so just make sure it stands up like that and you'll hear it start to drain it just drains all the water out of this uh, sort of water heater tank and again just stops anything you know freezing or bursting and causing any damage um, just make sure that when you want to use it again flick that lever down before you put all your water system on um, otherwise it's just going to pump all that fresh water straight out the overflow underneath the van um, so yeah just a good idea to make sure that's down before you uh, start using it again but down under your seat again just further forward from your water heater uh, this is your solar um, controller unit um, so you don't really have to worry about that too much it's sort of does its own thing there's a little readout up the top we'll show you shortly that um, tells you everything you need to know um, the only thing is the isolator switch beside it um, so if you ever need to change your 12 volt battery for any reason just come in and flip that off it just stops the solar panel feeding power to your battery connections um, while you're changing it and that so they can get up you know around the 19 to 20 volt range um, so yeah you don't really want that feeding the lines while you're working on it so just make sure you flip that off so just up above that uh, main unit this is your digital readout so it's just up behind your seating there um, so it tells you what your current voltage is at the moment um, lets you know if it's feeding the the system or not so in this corner here you'll get a little sun or a moon um, the sun means that it's it's feeding the system everything's good um, and the moon means the same it just means that it's not currently getting voltage from the panel um, and a good good thing to know is as long as this little arrow here has got the wee dash lines going towards the battery that means that the the panel is feeding the battery this main control for your fridge so you've got power on and off there so press that on takes a couple of seconds there just to sort of initiate itself um, so it's currently sitting on gas there at the moment um, on the right hand side here is just your temperature control so you just tab that through just to adjust your temperature so it works the same on uh, gas or mains power um, with the gas um, 
if there's no gas turned on or you've run out of gas you'll get a little number nine show up up here um, purely just to tell you that there's a you know a supply issue so either the the bottle's not turned on or you've run out of gas so as you can see the wee nines just come up there so if that happens just turn the fridge off go and check your gas make sure it's all good and then come back in and turn it back on and that should go fine um, you then got your main selector here so you tap that that'll bring you to mains power um, so yeah once that's on there that just means it's running on mains power as long as it's connected on the outside um, and then you also have this is a battery option um, it's not currently wired up on your van um, it is an option um, you would have to look at getting your um, 7 pin plug for your lights and things changed to a 12 pin plug system um, you'd have to get that changed on your van and on your vehicle um, it's designed that if you're at home um, before you go away um, you've chilled the fridge down on gas or 240 mains power um, you can then load your food and things in it hook it up to your vehicle and then change this to the battery option and what it does is it just maintains that temperature of the fridge while you're traveling um, it's more designed for long you know long trips because um, the fridges do hold their temperature for quite a wee while um, but if you are going to be traveling a long distance then it is an option that you could look at getting wired up um, it doesn't chill the fridge down it purely just holds the temperature that it's already been chilled to uh, while you're traveling so yeah that's just a, an extra option if you want to look at that this is your uh, your hob range and oven uh, you've got your glass panel there which lifts up uh, you then got your little side covers there <clears throat> you've got your four gas burners on the top work very much like a barbecue so push it in turn and hold it on your main sort of high setting there and then use your igniter so that'll click away and and ignite those and then you just release it once it's going and you can just adjust your flame control from there and then just back round to there for turning it off um, so that's for those four there um, you then got your grill and your oven um, they work the same principle so they push and turn and hold and then use the igniter the igniter ignites every um, unit so it's just the one igniter for all of them um, underneath here this first door this is your grill um, so you turn your grill on same as the other controls this little rail has gas that comes out either side when it's going um, so yeah push push turn and hold ignite it hold it for a few seconds let it go and then that should be your, your grill going and you just adjust your setting from there um, underneath that is your oven so you've got your main gas rail along the back um, yeah same principle as all the others so push turn it around hold it in hit your igniter that should get your oven going you can then release the button and just adjust your your temperature from there important thing to know um, once you've finished using your your range top here just make sure these sort of bars are cool to the touch and then fold that down it's just when you put the glass down it just needs to be nice and cool um, we have noticed in the past that if you put this glass down when it's too hot um, it has been known to shatter the glass so this is your uh, toilet unit on the inside uh, so you've got your main pump lever there so pulls up pushes down which flushes into your into your bowl there um, your bowl will rotate so if you've got extra long legs you can adjust that to fit in there nicely um, down here is your wee grey lever so that opens the wee door into the waste cassette so you can open that up use your pump to flush um, once that's once you're all done you then shut that off just closes that caddy back up um, and you're good to go um, one thing to know is make sure that this is in the closed position so around this way um, bef before you ever go to remove the waste caddy because um, it's designed to have everything shut off before it's removed um, so if it's open you'll find it may not come out at all so just make sure that's in the closed position so this is your bunk frame um, so remove all your cushions like we've done there um, you've got your wee slider which comes out for your for your base um, for your base one and you've got your bunk cushions in underneath there so that just slides back there but to lift your frame that uh, oh, just got to lift your wee lock tabs there so 
they come up this then rocks forward and it sort of comes up like that and then it rotates back again and then comes around and hits that wee lock position underneath there's a couple of little sort of uh, tab clips there on either end so just make sure they're undone and then you can open that top piece up that then folds back over and that sits up there and there's a couple of little dome clips up the top just to hold that up so that's just designed for you know making sure no children roll out the window um, and then you can set up all your bunk cushions and things from there